Hey everybody, welcome back to another What Would You Change episode. We are the Super Monkey Fighters. I am Loki, here with Monkey Feathers and Papa Nugget. How's it going, guys? Great. Good. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, the ninth film from Quentin Tarantino. It is the story of a faded television actor and his stunt double striving to achieve fame and success in the final years of Hollywood's golden age in 1969 Los Angeles. It, of course, stars Leonardo DiCaprio as the fading uh, television star Rick Dalton. Uh, his stunt double is played by Brad Pitt, who's named Cliff Booth. Margot Robbie plays Sharon Tate. Emile Hirsch plays Jay Sebring. Uh, Timothy Oliphant plays a part in that. I think he's. it's weird that he gets kind of top billing on that. Um, Al Pacino is in the movie. Luke Perry is in the movie. Damian Lewis, Dakota Fanning, Bruce Stern. I mean, the list goes on and on with this. Anyway, I, I uh, was surprised at how much I enjoyed this film. I tend to go into a lot of movies with as little information as I can get. Um, I, like I said, I like the way that the trailer kind of portrayed it more as uh, what that description is. But it's it's it kind of hinted at something more. And I, I do I liked the way that they kind of tell retelling of history that way, um, which is a kind of a staple for Tarantino. Um, but before we get into my thoughts, I'll ask you guys what you thought initial impressions do you guys like it uh, initially i liked yeah. it yeah 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 I, I liked i liked the story i found it interesting that it kind of told the story from three different perspectives because as soon as rick dalton goes on set he's doing his own thing and then cliff's going to do his thing and then interjected into that you have sharon tate who's doing her own thing and Certain parts in the story, they do kind of meet and interact with each other, but ideally they're all just three separate pieces of a story being told. One of the things that I did like about this movie was Rick and Cliff's friendship. It was very much kind of like a brotherly friendship of, yeah, I'll help you out. I'll do these things for you. Hey, I'll be your driver. You know, I'll do these things for you. And it was just a lot of, it seemed genuine to me. And yeah, I actually I, I, liked I, that. I liked the line, uh, the narration line um, before the final scene of uh, when you've got a friendship that's more than a brother, but less than a wife, <laughs> a little less than a wife. Um, is, is how, how it was. So their relationship was summarized. I thought that was a very good line. The relationship between Caprio and, Brad Pitt's characters. It was, it was easy to to see them as like real people, characters that you could identify, at least identify with or see as real people. So that that for me carried the story. Yeah. So I, I really did like how that was portrayed, and I liked there are like some tiny little detail things that I liked, the fact that. Cliff had a lot of scars on him from being a stunt double, that they incorporated that into his being, so to speak, that, yeah, you know, he's a stunt double. He's probably gotten bruised and cut and beat up from his time doing that, and they actually incorporated that. And another scene that I actually really enjoyed was Sharon Tate as she's watching herself on the big screen, because it's something that I've always wondered about celebrities is how often they themselves go to a movie theater incognito just to see how an audience is reacting to their movie. And I actually kind of liked that that little scene that she's enjoying this movie as well as enjoying the audience's reactions. So there are a lot of tiny little details about it, but I know that the main thing I did like was Rick and Cliff's friendship. Their not-quite-wife friendship. <laughs> Yeah, they, they they kind of hinted at it. I think one in one of the initial scenes that that there was a more of a relationship there, but I don't think there necessarily was. So, um, I think it was more just a a long term friendship kind of thing. Anyway, lifelong platonic partners. So yeah, um, nuggets. Yeah, so I I thought as you kind of mentioned the the attention to detail on everything was really good. Uh, the one thing that I probably enjoyed way too much of this film was the dog food both uh, yeah i could <laughs> so 
<laughs> if you didn't notice, it was both raccoon and rat flavored dog food. I did oh, yeah. not notice that. You didn't? I oh, did I, not I, know. I noticed it because as he was trying to figure out which part of, like, which one he was trying to grab from it, as soon as he put them both on the counter, uh-huh. I realized, oh, they're special flavors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did I did recognize that they were two different um, cans, mm-hmm. but I didn't see the, the, the flavoring on them. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, just the, the small details like that um, that are easy to, to overlook. Um, and, and it was littered throughout, um, the fact that it was set in, uh, 69 and just like, I, I, I don't know if any of you noticed anything that seemed out of place, but at least as far as I could tell, it looked pretty spot um, no, on. No, I mean, I was, I was very impressed with how they did all of that. Um, there's a montage scene when all the city lights are turning on, mm-hmm. uh, all the neon signs where I was just amazed that how much of that was either still around or that they could find. And then I got thinking, well, it's Quentin Tarantino. So I'm sure he just had all of those in his backyard and they just said, Oh, let's go put them back up. Cause that's just, it's one of those things with Tarantino with attention to detail, especially is his, it's one of the things he excels at and it really shows through in most things that he does. But the thing that stood out to me with that was the cars. Yeah. There's some, some pretty iconic, uh, classics that that fit in that that are just because I, I looked it up uh the car that roman polanski drives uh, the character in the film drives is apparently the actual car it's actually roman polanski's car so attention to detail is you know you're gonna get roman polanski's car you get roman polanski's car you don't remake it so the one thing i noticed i don't know if you ever watch older films or it seems like to me there's some that just feel like just watching it visually feels like a movie like the way it looks the way it's shot mm-hmm. and this is one of those films that's that gives me that feeling it feels like a real movie like i'm watching a movie yeah it does it doesn't feel cheap that's the the best way i can describe it uh, it, it's one of those things that stood out to me um, because a lot of it is behind the scenes Hollywood stuff, um, but more TV, right? It's it's old mm-hmm. TV shows that they're they're filming, and there's there's those times when it's actually shot as if it were those things, um, you know, uh, four three aspect ratio. But when they're in the moment on set, it's shot like a movie. It's shot better than the TV show actually would be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, with the old westerns, there's. The camera movements are much better than those would be. There's actually camera movements, whereas most TV shows would probably just have a static camera and be a wide shot and, you know, that kind of thing. But it's tight on details and it's it's those interesting kinds of things. And one thing as well that that lends to a lot of that is the driving shots. I think they do the driving shots really well that lend it to being a a film and not – it adds to that quality especially as people are leaving the, the, the kind of the cul-de-sac, you know, they're, you know, the cars kind of spin out and the, the camera is just locked to the back of the car with the people in it. And, you know, it's, it looks good and it, it, it helps immerse you in that world and helps build those characters, which is really nice. Quentin Tarantino is a, a, an interesting director to me and, and filmmaker. Um, I see him as the ultimate film student. Um, he takes from, he's studied film his whole life. He he's, he's learned what other people do and he uses those techniques and those, those things to great effect. I've, I do think he's a little overrated at times. I've just heard too many people tell me that he's this amazing, revolutionary, fantastic filmmaker. He's a very good filmmaker. Don't get me wrong. He knows how to make a movie, but I don't see him as being revolutionary in the same way that, um, Peter Jackson was with Lord of the Rings or um, 2001 Space Odyssey with special effects or, you know, uh, those kinds of things. I think he, he knows how to make a really good film and he sticks to that. And that's that's fantastic. All of that said, he's got two different kinds of styles to me. And there's the more realistic character driven things like Jackie Brown, which is my favorite of his films. And then there's the completely off the wall over-the-top, Kill Bill, gratuitous violence and action films. Um, so I loved the first 
90% of this film for being more grounded in those characters in that realistic world. And then when it kind of switches at the end, I also loved that too, because it was, it was just enough of that. Um, yeah, it wasn't craziness to leave you. Yeah. It wasn't too much. Um, I got yeah. to the end of the movie. And I was just like, this is now my favorite movie. Cause it's hilarious. Like that entire <laughs> final scene is just, it was the funniest thing I have seen in a very, very long time. So I loved it all the way through. There are some things I didn't like, which we'll get into, but the one thing that just blew me away about this is that blew me away the most is how well everything lends to building these characters. I mean, every shot, every interaction, every, everything you see on screen builds these characters as who they are. It lends to those kinds of things. Um, where a lot of films kind of fall short on that. Like characters are just going, people or actors are just going through the motions just to kind of, you know, fill time. It seems this they're doing things cause it, it's what their characters do. It's, mm-hmm. and it helps build them and helps you identify and grow with them. And that's the thing that stood out the most to me is there was nothing that happened without purpose. Um, you know, even the dog food, right? I mean, that whole scene is him, it's establishing his his character as being that dominant, the alpha dog, um, and his relationship. That, but it's not it's not uh, he's it's it's the caring alpha dog, right? I mean he's he's taking care of his dog. It's the it's it's still showing charge, that relationship right? he it's, has with yeah, his dog. It's showing that relationship, yeah, and that lends to how he interacts with everybody else, right? He's not the big action Hollywood star, but he's definitely the one in control of everything. Right. I just, I I loved those, all of those kinds of things. That's really stood out to me. And I think really made this one, one of the better Tarantino films. So then what would you say with this film you don't like? I absolutely don't like Quentin Tarantino's foot fetish. Um, I'm only I'm only laughing because that's actually what I wrote down as mine yeah. because um, I was going to say that before I I've seen a couple of Quentin Tarantino films but I never really noticed the foot fetish until I'm starting to see other people mention it and then very distinctly in this one it's like oh no I get it I get why people are saying I, he has a foot fetish I get it yeah um it was it was not even just on display. It was in the way of the film. It um, drew attention to it. Like it, not yeah. in a good way. The most gratuitous is when the character's name is Pussycat. Um, when she pushes her feet up on the windshield, that was, uh, the, the that scene, was just way too much in your face. The scene that really got me was when Cliff was at the cult and Ella Fanning's character, or uh, Dakota Fanning, sorry, wrong sister. When her character points specifically with her foot to where the yeah. owner of the ranch is, it's like mm-hmm. that's a very distinctive gesture yeah. to use. Um, but even the scene with um, the one that you like, Monkey Feathers, with Sharon Tate in the movie theater. Oh yeah, it pulled me out of that because instead of looking at the character and identifying with her and and the journey that she's going through, watching herself on screen and watching the audience reactions and those kinds of things, I was just looking at her gross, dirty feet. Yeah. And and has anyone yeah. been in an old movie theater? Like you those don't, floors you don't aren't. Foot. You well, just and it's don't. it's it's one of those things that the the male characters get to have their time on screen building their character and the female characters get that but it's it's their behind feet. their feet. <laughs> it's it's not it it, it does them a disservice, yeah, I think. I'd agree. Especially in this film. I mean, it's the one thing I would have taken out. I, I, I can't help but wonder if he sees all these comments about people saying he has a foot fetish and he's just feeding into that with all of <laughs> his movies to I where mean, it, it, it just gets worse yeah. and worse because he's just trying to feed it. Because especially in the, the car scene when she's pushing her feet up against the, the, the windshield, the focus is on that and not on the actual scene of, of the characters interacting where in the past with like Kill Bill, uh, when Uma Thurman's uh, paralyzed, she just woke up from a coma and she's dragging herself along the floor. You know, the camera follows her feet the entire time, but it's her crawling along the floor. It's not her interacting with a bunch of other characters. You know, it's it, it just doesn't get in the way where it does in this film. It's really too much, I think. Outside of that, I kind of like and don't like the use of very famous people 
in bit roles and in, in smaller parts. I mean, our, you look through the cast and, and it's a fairly good mix of known and unknown, but it's like, Hey, it's Kurt Russell. It's a, hey, it's a, yeah. Hey. Um, well, and Kurt Russell playing a part and being the narrator, um, and having some just kind of fairly sparse, uh, narration, like it, that seems kind of out of place to me a little bit as well. And then, yeah, every time you turn around, I think it's a little distracting when you're like, oh, hey, that's Luke Perry playing this bit part. And Al Pacino's character makes a little bit more sense. It's it's kind of a bigger impact on the overall story and those kinds of things. But even Maya Hawk, like I had to kind of stop and look her up because I was like, that face looks really familiar. Where do I know that from? And you barely see her in, in it. So those are the kinds of the things that, that pull me out of it. Right off. I do dislike the foot fetish. It's very distracting of a lot of scenes. And while you mentioned the Sharon Tate scene in the movie theater, I liked it, except, yeah, the the feet and the dirty yeah. feet. And it's very distracting. It's It almost just draws your eye directly to it, and then you forget about what's going on in the scene. Yeah, and that's, because, I like that scene should be better, but it's not because of the feet. And even scenes where people have shoes on, it's very much feet, but with shoes. Because when they were getting out of the car, it's focused on the feet or other scenes. And it it's very distracting. And the scene with uh, Pussycat in the car with Cliff yeah, and her feet was. are pressed against the windshield. As soon as her feet were pressed against the windshield, I forgot what was even going on in the scene, like yeah. what she was saying. To yeah. where I thought, like, I <laughs> what? I, I missed this whole scene yeah. <laughs> because of the feet. So that is something that I think could be removed. But one of the other things that it was kind of jarring for me, but the use of jump cuts, because there's the scene with Rick Dalton and uh, Tim- Timothy Oliphant's character. I can't remember what his name was, but they're talking to each other. I believe before a scene, but there were some jump cuts in it and it felt weird. And in other scenes, it, it worked to a point, but some of the jump cuts and how they were incorporated, I just, I didn't like because it was very jarring and I felt like I was blinking, but I knew that I wasn't. And so that kind of took me out of the movie a little bit when it just was there as well as the use of narration because it was used in the beginning of the film for like a sentence. And then it was more at the end of the film, just talking about other things without any explanation. It was just kind of there. Anything else you guys want to add? Anything else big that stood out? So just to give context, so I didn't know anything about this going into it. I didn't look it up. I didn't watch a trailer. All I saw was like the little blurb about what it, what it's about. So I didn't like I knew there was some historical figures going on, but it probably it didn't click until they were in the car. The hippies were in the car about ready to um, break into the house and do all that. Like at the very at the very end. That's when I I, it it clicked and it was about uh, the Manson murders. Um, yeah. when they were saying, cause they was, they'd say Charlie and I'm like, who's yeah. Charlie. And then yeah. that's when it finally clicked what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was trying to figure that out. And so because of that, like, I'm like I'm trying to figure out like what, what's going on with Sharon Tate? Like, why are we following her? Nothing's happening. She's okay. She's, uh, an actor and she's doing this stuff, but she's like, none. It doesn't tie into the plot anywhere and Polanski. Yeah. And so to me, I'm like this, like if we have like a few different plots going on and this one's going nowhere or nothing's happened. And so. And it, it actually made it worse once we got to the end and still nothing happened. <laughs> and I get that it's it's demonstrating the historical figures but as a movie, nothing happens with them. Why did we spend so much time following them yeah. and nothing yeah. happened? 
Yeah. Like for two hours and 40 minutes, like I felt like yeah. that could have been trimmed down. Like, and I honestly don't care that she went into a theater and watched herself. Like I would be fine getting that part of my life mm-hmm. back. I would be okay with that. Um, yeah. So I think, I think there was a way too much invested in developing those characters that we never actually did anything with. Yeah. And if, if you don't know the story and you don't realize that's what it's about, the bait and switch doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Um, but once you, you kind of see, okay, yep, that's kind of where they're going. I know who these people are. I know where this place is, those kinds of things that bait and switch really works. And it's the, it's the scene at the ranch, that scene could be the the movie. I mean, that's the story of the movie where he's setting up that there's something sinister going uh-huh. on, that it's going to be this. And then it's a switch and it's like, no, everything's fine. Everything they're saying is true. They're just being weird about it for some reason. Yeah. There's a lot of tension. I love the tension in that whole yeah. Yeah. scene. And that's, that, if you, if you know the story, yeah. that's, that's the tension throughout the entire thing. And so every time you see Sharon Tate and you see Polanski doing stuff and you see those neighbors, it's like, you know, what's coming up. You know, I, the whole time I every time I saw the front door, I could see the the pigs or whatever it was that it was scrawled in blood on the on the door mm-hmm. uh, that was left there. You know, so that was that tension. So that worked really well for me. But I could see not knowing it that. Yeah, you're like, why are we spending so much yeah. time with this character who's not who who's never interacted with anyone else? in the film? So I feel like if you're going to if you need the audience to know about that and have context, you need to you need to give it. Because, yeah. yeah, I'm the entire time yeah. I'm like, like, what, who, what, what's going on? Like, why are yeah. we watching this? Um, yeah. That being said, like, I still, I still liked it. Like, it was good, but that really bothered yeah. me. Um, so I would have called yeah, it was- out and not just assumed that people are going to know about it because, like, it, it, I, like, coming back around now that I understand, yeah, like, I see yeah, it, but it makes sense. But watching but, it, like I had no idea. Like I, so I knew there was were, something I was missing. Like I knew, <laughs> yeah, I could feel that. But yeah, I wish they would have just. You were two and a half hours into a two, two, <laughs> two, minute, two hour forty five minute movie before you're like, oh okay, the lights came on. <laughs> yeah. So I wish they would have been a little clearer with that. I I would reduce it still. I would make make it shorter. I still, even with that, like, I don't know. It doesn't do it as much for me. Like, to me, the movie yeah. is about um, Brad Pitt and DiCaprio's characters. Mm-hmm. Um, because you can still build up all the Polanski and Sharon Tate stuff, um, but not follow them as much as we they do. Because I don't feel like it goes anywhere. You can still have that historical... Like, I don't need to to understand the relationship and everything of Polanski and Sharon Tate and Sebring and like, yeah, like even the, the other two, the, the Folgers air and the other guy, like that was enough. That's as much as I really needed to know about them. Yeah. Like that was fine. Like it could have been about it, about as much with everyone else. Um, like, and going to the, the playboy mansion, like to me, like that was all like, that served no purpose to me. Like they're they're trying, to, yeah, they're they're trying to establish the their characters, but then it goes nowhere, and so that's I think all that could be cut. It could be replaced with shorter, shorter stuff. Yeah, so that's what I would change. Um, and if you can call out and uh, to 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 help idiots like me um know what's going on earlier in the film so it actually delivers an impact that might help too <laughs> well and it, it's one of those things we've talked about a lot about where sometimes exposition is necessary but again like so with me seeing that the, the first trailer i saw with this because the first trailer i think is just about brad pitt and leonardo dicaprio um, but then later on, it got known that Sharon Tate and, and that Margot Robbie was playing that. And they kind of added some of that into it. But I, I try to avoid that. But once I knew that was there, I was like, OK, this is what this is going to be about. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a weird like it's honestly part of why I didn't want to see it initially is because I was like, I'm kind of done with Tarantino because, you know, the last couple I've just not really enjoyed. They've been ridiculous and over the top and not. I can't get into them. 
And this is going to be about a very horrific event, and I soaked that. So, which honestly, up until they kicked the door into the house, I was still, yep, this is going to be about that. I thought that, yeah, they're going to twist up and make it different, but it's, yeah, I, yeah. So, like, I, I was locked in the entire time. So, but I also had context and knew, um, and seeing it from that, or, or you know, trying to look at it from a different point of view, yeah, this would be a terrible movie if you didn't know anything about the Manson murders and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, you'd be like, but I mean, once, what, once it what, clicked, what, once it clicked, and I, yeah. I realized what was going on, like, it was great. Like, mm-hmm. like it all yeah. came together. Like that, that, yeah. that awakening I had, like it was good. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I knew there, the, I could feel it rumbling around in my brain. I'm like, something ain't right. Yeah. I know I'm supposed to know more, but then once it clicked, yeah. it, it was good. But I wish I would have yeah. had that the entire time or at least earlier on in, in the show. I can't remember cause, uh, Charlie Manson is in the film. Yes. But I don't think they point out that that's who it no, is. No, they don't. He just shows up and it's, he's like, he's just, I'm looking for someone. And he's like, oh, go walk this little path. OK, yeah. this is Charlie. I'm like, yeah. OK, Charlie. Who's Charlie? I, saying, I don't even, you know, did they even did. Yeah. Did they even call out that he was Charlie in that scene? I don't know. I don't I don't remember. I don't remember I, yeah. Actually. So. Because, I mean, they, they, they do the movie things where they, they focus on his face and they, they make sure that there's a reveal kind of a thing. So if you know who it is, then you know who it yeah. is. But until then, you're just like, what's with this guy? This is just That's how I guy. felt. I know, this is, I know this is supposed to be important, but I don't know why. Yep. The feet, that's really the only thing I would change is just stop doing that. Um because I think everything else in it was fantastic. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion about the Bruce Lee scene, but um, I thought it was funny. Brad Pitt's Brad Pitt's response to that was honestly the, my, what my response was as a kid when somebody first told me that same BS story of his fists are registered weapons. He'll go to jail if he kills somebody. He's like, yeah, everyone will go to jail if they kill something like that's <laughs> that's what happens. Like, yeah. Um. I just, you know, I, I liked that, everything about that interaction. I mean, you could dissect it a thousand times and um, it just, it, it's impactful. It builds the character. It, it, it does a lot. You know, that was really good. Um, and I absolutely loved, I mean, that whole final scene when he's tripping out and they're breaking into the house, you know, where the switch from from what really happened where they actually went up the other street and murdered everybody in the house. And it was horrific and terrible. And, uh, but when he's like, I know all you guys, what's your name? I can't remember your name. And he's like, I'm the devil here to do the devil's work. <laughs> and his response is no, nah, it was dumber than that. <laughs> I mean, from, uh, I was already invested in the film. I already really enjoyed it, but that just kind of cemented down just of how uh, everything that was going to, con- to going to happen, all of the over the top ridiculousness that came after that was just perfect because of that. Um, yeah, I just, I, everything, I loved everything about it. It was great. So the one thing you would definitely change though, to make it better is the foot fetish. is the feet, like the foot fed. I just, it, it's not like it was gross or uncomfortable. It was just like, I, I want to know what's going on. I don't want to look at feet. Like it just, it pulled me out of everything. And that was that. Get rid of the narration or maybe have it more dur- during the film to make it more consistent and more in line with what was going on without it just randomly being there. Because the narration helped provide context to things, especially in the beginning where it talks about why Cliff is driving Rick around. It made sense because it it's to saying, no, 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 Rick, he yeah, just kept crashing his car. He, yeah. He, no, he, yeah. So I just, certain things like that, like the foot fetish, I would change that. Just don't have it because it takes away from the oh. actual scene. But as well as changing some of the, the, I guess, camera work or editing or however it was in the in the final process but change that so that it's less jarring as well as narration yeah. either 
make it more consistent throughout the film or just get rid of it altogether. Yeah. So I guess with that one, we'll sign off unless you guys have anything else. If you don't want to talk about feet some more, um, please join our f- uh foot discord that's not a real thing don't don't, don't, don't even don't even <laughs> don't even because there will be people who will be like, striving for it i found a it. discord about feet i found a discord about it, feet and just, that's what we'll be known for yeah. just don't <laughs> all right um let us know what you think about uh once upon a time in hollywood uh quentin tarantino um please don't tell us about feet i know you're going to from now on um but keep those opinions to yourselves um, but let us know what else we should watch um what we're doing right what we're doing wrong uh we're still early in this so we're gonna sign off and we'll catch you in the next one adios <laughs>